Hello and welcome back to my analytics tutorials. This is Gabby with Andrews Analytics. This week I will be covering mobile reports uh, in uh, Adobe Analytics. And uh, as you can see here, I've actually already put together a dashboard uh, with some mobile reports just to kind of give a demonstration, a little feel for, uh, for some of the reports and things. But I'm going to go through as quickly as possible each of the possible reports in here. Um, in order to get to your mobile reports, there will be a mobile... Um, uh, <laughs> there's a there's a mobile link over here on the uh, left navigation and you just click on it and you can see all of the available reports now your mobile uh, link um, into the navigation may be in a different place um, I have done a previous tutorial where I showed how you can uh, customize your navigation uh, and so go ahead and look for that if you're interested in learning how to do that so my mobile um, link may be in a different place than it is for you all right, so uh, first off, here are all of the different types of report, mobile reports that are available. Um, devices, device type, manufacturer, um, screen size, and then you can just do screen height or screen width um, if that's all you're interested in. Um, cookie support, image support, color depth, audio support, video support, and operating system. So start off with looking at devices. So we're going to go ahead and load that. Okay, so here we're looking at the devices report. Um, you have your standard bar graph. Um, I have set my default metrics to be unique visitors, visits, page views. That's just the default that I always use. And um, down here we have a breakdown of all of the uh, devices uh, that have visited my site in the last year. And this is basically looking at year to date right now. Um, non mobile would be basically desktop computers. Uh, laptops, I think, um, are also included in this. So um, everything here would be either a phone, tablet, or some other device um, like that, like an iPod Touch um, as well. Even though I don't see iPod Touch in here, but that would be counted. And it kind of gives you a breakdown based on specific device names. So the Galaxy Tab 3 versus the Galaxy S4, etc. So that's basically what the devices report gives you. Um, so we'll move on to the next one. So next is device type. Let that load real quick. All right, and so this kind of breaks it down to other. Other would be, again, desktops and laptops. Uh, and then we have tablets and we have mobile phones. Um, and here you can kind of see, and if you wanted to look at it in a pie chart uh, instead to see percentages, um, we can always rerun that as well because the, the bar chart's just the default. But if we look at the visitors, um, desktops, I, the majority of my traffic comes from desktops. I get some from tablets and some from mobile phones. All right, moving right along, then uh, you can take a look at manufacturer. You can see what that looks like. And here you can see, and it's it's kind of defaulting to the pie chart just because that's what I ran in the last report. And then you can see here we've got a breakdown of non-mobile and then um, Apple, Samsung, LG, S, uh, Asus, and um, Google in terms of the uh, manufacturers of the devices that have visited me um, year to date. All right, looking at screen size. Okay, this is very inform good information for anyone who is developing for mobile to have a feel for, especially if you're planning on developing a mobile app or um, actually launching either a responsive um, website or a uh, mobile friendly uh, version of your website. Um, having a feel for the majority of, of users who are coming to your site on mobile and what screen sizes they're using, I think this is extremely helpful. So you can kind of see um, here the breakdown of the different um, screen resolutions that uh, come to the site. And then um, I'm going to skip over height and width because you already see height and width here. Um, for some um, developers it's sometimes more important to know the height or the width and everything and so you can just report on just that or you can do screen size and you can see both all right so skipping right along over to cookie support and this just basically gives you an information in terms of okay um, non-mobile traffic um, so it you know cookies are different um, I think in terms of support for 
um, non-mobile and so there we, we get uh, another cookie support report for desktops in a, in a different report we're just interested right now in cookies and 100% of all people who have uh, come to my site via mobile have cookies supported if they didn't um, there would be a non-supported um, option um, on here as well all right looking now to image support and this again is really good information especially if you're planning on doing um, an app or a mobile friendly version of your site to see um, the type of images that are are being uh, supported so PNGs, JPEGs, GIFs both 87 and 89A 89A being um, the animated GIFs um, and so you can see here that there are slightly fewer people, uh, slightly fewer uh, support for animated GIFs than there are for the other types of formats. So that's an important piece of information if you're planning on having animated GIFs on your app or on your mobile site. Um, that you know you have to keep in mind that hey, uh, not all of your users are going to users devices are going to support um, the mobile one. So that is just something to keep in mind. All right, going into color depth. So just keeping this in mind in terms of, of when you're developing uh, things, uh, looking at, you know, we, we have 16-bit, 24-bit, uh, and 32-bit. And the majority of the people visiting my site are 16-bit, um, and quite a few are 24-bit. Very few are 32-bit. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind. Like if you were going to develop going to spend the time developing 32-bit, you know, is it worth it to do it now um, or not? You know, which which color depth do you need to support for your users? All right, looking at audio support, especially if you're planning on having videos, podcasts, etc. Uh, available for mobile. Um, here are the different types of audio um, and these are the ones that obviously people who have visited my site, and obviously there's not a lot of people who are visiting my site right now, but the majority of people who visit my site, um, they have uh, no audio support. Well, I, the none I think is majority of that is going to be desktop again. And they probably do have audio support, but not mobile audio support. So, you know, that's a whole nother ball of wax there. But for those people who are coming here with mobile mobile devices, um, AAC and MP3 are the uh, most popular uh, supported audio uh, formats. MIDI AMR and MIDI polyphonic. So the monophonic and polyphonic MIDIs um, are not being supported as much. There's very much fewer people who have that type of support on their devices. Alrighty, now we go into video support. And here's all the various uh, video codecs that are being um, supported by the various devices. So here um, you can see these types of, of um, H.264 um, ones are being supported um, the most often uh, with the devices that are visiting my site. Um, and obviously down here where you can see where there's um, much less support for some of these other types of um, audio co video codecs. So uh, this again is something to keep in mind, especially if you're planning on providing any kind of video uh, feeds, um, either through an app or a web uh, interface for your um, for your users, you know uh, what what is supported, what isn't uh, when they're when they're actually coming to uh, to watch anything on your site if you're planning on having video. So it's definitely interesting information to uh, to have, especially when you're planning on developing anything new uh, in the mobile space. All right, final report um, unknown again is going to be um, your desktops and things. Um, this they they really shouldn't rename this to non-mobile. I think it would make more sense. And then um, iOS and Android. So obviously iOS um, is much more popular. I get a lot more traffic from iOS users. And then I do get some traffic from Android. And so far this year I've gotten no um, traffic from Windows Phone users. And I'm not sure if there's any other uh, mobile um, operating systems out there at all anyway. But be that as it may, uh, and I'm just going to go real quick back to my um, dashboard just so you can kind of see how I've I've decided to, 
to look at and keep a, a, an eye on with my various um, reports here. So you can see for the devices report, one of the things I've opted for was a bubble chart where I can kind of take a look at, um, you know, you know how big the bubble is kind of shows, you know, how much traffic and things are coming. And obviously, um, the higher up uh, and the further over it is, is also uh, important. And so obviously, Apple iPad, it just, you know, huge over here where we've got, you know, the Samsungs and that kind of thing. So I find this um, layout and graph uh, kind of an interesting way of looking at mobile in, in many ways. And I know not everyone uh, believes in pie charts, but I actually think pie charts are a really quick visual way of looking at, okay, um, what's going on? You know, look at, we've got desktop, tablet, mobile phone, boom. You can just visually see uh, where the majority of the traffic is coming from uh, in terms of, of types of devices and that kind of thing. Um, down here with the uh, various support uh, type of reports with video, audio, cookie, and image support. Um, I opted to go for tables just because um, the charts and graphs the really don't tell the whole picture in a dashboard and just the raw numbers um, is actually what, what makes things much more interesting for me. Um, and then screen sizes, to me it really doesn't matter one way or the other, it's just you know, interesting to take a look at the various uh, numbers down here and, and things. So anyway, that is my uh, tutorial on the mobile reports in Adobe Analytics. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave a question down in the comments below. I will do my best to answer it in a timely fashion. And uh, if you uh, find these tutorials at all uh, useful, please uh, like them, um, please share them, and uh, if you are not yet subscribed, please subscribe. Um, I am going to be doing a mix of Adobe and Google Analytics tutorials uh, over the weeks, and occasionally I will do uh, news and reviews and, and other types of videos as well um, that relate to uh, the analytics community, and I always have a new video, or I try to at least have a new video every Wednesday. Uh, barring um, disaster or uh, business travel, that kind of thing. All right, well, thanks again for joining me, and until next week, take care. Bye-bye. So as you can see, we're looking at the um, Google Tag Manager um, interface, and I've already set up Google Tag Manager for my business site, Interest Analytics. Um, so since I've already done that, um, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to use...